was pretty proud of the work that we'd done. The 75 had had a considerable quantity of BMW guidance, but the nitty gritty of the things we had done at Longbridge. I think it was a very good car and some of the build quality aspects that perhaps had been lacking in the old company I think were instilled within improved company and the following is obviously very strong today. Uh, we put a lot of effort to look at the Rovers in the past and the values that customers placed in those cars. Uh, welcoming, um, effortless, uh, world-class engineering, craftsmanship, Britishness. Richard Woolley was the designer. He was put in charge of the exterior design on this vehicle and it's stated that it was a Rover but done in a very contemporary way, a very modern looking car and he was extremely pleased with what came out at the end of this. When we wheeled out the first model out into the viewing garden at Canley, everybody gathered round and we pulled the cover off and there was a sort of spontaneous round of applause which I'd never, I'd never experienced before. We had this really powerful tool that we were using on Freelander and transferring the technology to the R40 team and uh, very much pioneering days. We took on the use of electronic build that had been pioneered on Freelander. One of the big challenges is to work genuinely concurrently so you stop people going off and doing their own thing separately and coming back six months later and finding they don't fit, which was a, a traditional problem in the motor industry and we, and we basically solved that problem. Working with that was saying, right, okay, we want to reduce the amount of prototypes that are actually crashed into the wall. So therefore do the electronic crash tests beforehand to a representative level for Euro NCAP. So the international press launch was uh, Seville. Uh, great location, five weeks, so we saw the spring season go into summer. Uh, we got through 875 journalists. I mean, to come out in such a fantastic car. Um, yeah, everyone was very proud of that car. And the company was something special, you know, really special place. Then we had, of course, the bombshell that BMW was going to pull out of Rover Group. Of course, we wouldn't be moving the paint shops, they'd be staying where they were, but we'd have to facilitise the paint shops to make sure that they could cope with, in our case, a bigger car, and in Cowley's place, a smaller car. At the time of the BMW split, it was called MG Rover but we only had one MG product. Hence, how do we get to having a much more sporting version? And that's where the Z products came in. When you drove them, you didn't know there was a V8 lump here. You know, it just didn't feel like there was a V8 engine. And one day we did some testing with our uh, comparator car, which of course was a Mustang. This was so much more a proper driver's car. It was a world-class car. Whenever we come across people who've worked on Rover 75, we all look back with very fond memories, not just of the car, but of working together as a team. Sadly, and ultimately, that was the thing that stands out out of my whole career, that the teamwork on both 600, but particularly on the 75, was just outstanding.